Hey, what's going on, everybody? John here at Havoc Maker Studio and FMP War Gamers. So, news is a little slow this week, dealing with a uh, family member, uh, actually my mother, going into the hospital for some surgery and whatnot. We're waiting to hear um, what's going on. I mean, it's been about six hours, so we're waiting for results. <laughs> Hopefully, the surgery is done. Um, but you're not here for that. Let's talk about Marvel Crisis Protocol. A lot has dropped this week. We already talked about uh, Felicia Hardy, the black cat that will be coming with the amazing Spider-Man. So, Panel to Play dropped yesterday. Was it yesterday? No, two days ago. I waited because I wanted to see what else Marvel Crisis Protocol was going to put out this week. And we're going to cover that. So, let's take a real quick look at Craven the Hunter. Um, kind of a jerk, but also kind of a cool character. So, um, let's take a look at see how they translate him from the pages of the comic book to the actual uh to the actual game and there is some news out there apparently the gentleman that played quicksilver aaron uh, i can't think of his name but in the age of ultron he played quicksilver uh in the mcu it looks like he's going to be going over to sony and he might be playing as craven the hunter so that is some interesting news so we're gonna we're getting all sorts of Craven Hunter news this week. So let's take a look at this mainly man and what he's gonna be bringing to the tabletop. So on the tabletop, I have yet to read this, so we're all looking at it together. Um, he bet he's best in battle when he focuses his attention. Uh, he's got his kukri, which is a uh, long uh, long bladed knife dagger, however you want to call it, used by the Gurkha. And spear in combination. He has devastating hit and run tactics before vanishing into hiding, ready for his next assault. So that's cool. Sounds like he's going to have some uh, movement abilities to do some damage and then be able to quickly distance himself. Probably only like short range, but still, that's not too bad. Um, on his turn, if he focuses his energy, he can land a total of 12 attack dice against a single character. And make both a short and medium advance to boot. Now, my guess is that this is between, this is probably using two different abilities. So just keep that in mind, is that it's probably using his main attack and his uh, power cost attack. But it might be, who knows, it might be more or less. But right now, I'm thinking that's pretty devastating. 12 dice, because 12 attack dice, potentially, if you don't remember, the critical dice uh, symbol on the die. If you roll that, it's potentially another success. So that's a potential of 24, attack, uh, 24 successes and then be able to make a short and medium advance on top of that. So that's not too bad. That's not too bad. Now this, probably what they're setting up here is he's gonna have to pop two actions to do that, but still that's not too shabby. So let's move on here. So beyond just his blade skills, he has Expert Tracker. allows him to direct a crisis team in battle to better, better land their strikes. Um, while his talent for anticipating the movements of his prey allows him to punish them for moving in the open in his presence. So he probably um, is able to... Um, my guess here is he can boost a team by giving them... Letting them re-roll one of their dice or change like say a a blank to a success i think that might be something there or maybe allows a re-roll for everybody and then there's ability to punish those that are in the open probably if you're within a certain range my guess is probably within a range three of him he can probably hit you with like stagger or stun some sort of status effect uh, Court of the Beast is a, actually one of his other named abilities. Um, it's his pre-international hunt, hunting ability. It lets him designate a character within range 3. So there's, that sounds like there's going to be range 3 is going to be his big thing. Until the end of the character's next activation, they suffer 1 damage. 
Plus, if the chosen character happens to be a pesky wall crawler, they lose that power for the duration of the effect. Corner the beast. Corner the beast is a great power to use. Um, so that's that's actually not too bad. I wonder if that will also um, play on the other movement abilities like fly. You know, does that affect fly and wall crawler? Because they're essentially the same ability. They're just named different. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, Rounding out his talents, he has the Elixir of Calypso, which is an innate superpower allows him to reroll one dice for each of his attack or defense rolls, representing this superhuman strength, speed, and reflexes. So that's not too bad. Uh, he's gonna. So he sounds like he's going to be a damage dealer, a big-time damage dealer. Probably does not have a lot of um, abilities, for, I mean, geared towards, like, capturing objectives and stuff. He sounds like he's going to almost like a control damage control type character you want him to get into the thick of it with the the enemy to tie them up while you are running around capturing objectives and to and capturing tokens and whatnot so this is he sounds like he could be a good deal probably size two um probably well size two looking at his base for sure and probably around threat three, possibly, possibly threat four. But I'm I'm predicting threat three with a high physical defense and low energy and low uh, mystical. So at least I would say threes across the board, possibly four for his physical defenses. I don't know. You guys let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Let's move on to other things that they revealed this week. So we got a good sneak peek I, I don't want to say sneak peek a reveal uh, a, a better image of the lizard and the amazing spider-man and we're going to take a look at a couple other things here in just a moment so we can have a better image and you guys can go to the atomic uh, mass games page look at their gallery and get a much better 3d image and i'll show you that here in just a second i think um the lizard looks pretty good he looks pretty solid. He's on a, both of these two, him and Amazing Spider-Man are going to be on the 50 millimeter bases. It looks like they are big boys. Well, it's really more like they've got a lot of stuff going on their base. And thank God, even though there is line of sight in the game, it's not about, you know, are you directly hidden behind? Like you can't see whatsoever. It's like, is character A behind a, a, a piece of terrain? Yes or no? Yes. Good. Then you've got cover. That sort of thing. That's what I like about their rules. They keep them nice and simple. So, anyways, right now, Lizard is looking pretty damn good. Um, one of the most impressive large models I've seen. I love the stunning dynamic effect of him exploding out of the sewer. That's really cool. I think uh, he's going to be one of my favorites. So, we're going to let's take a look at. Well, we're going to take a look at Spider Man. If you're not familiar, if you go to the gallery page, for Atomic Mass games, you can look at all the characters, and, it, and the more you scroll down, yeah, you know, like I selected Amazing Spider-Man and Black Cat. Uh, when you scroll down, you can read about the description, see what comes in it, blah blah blah, see the price, and more importantly, you can go to a 3D image gallery. Now, I'm not going to blow this up because I'm not my screen's not set up for it, but you can sit there and zoom in and look at the miniature and scroll around with your mouse and see every little angle of it, which is good for prepping on how you're going to paint it, how you're going to assemble it, are you going to need to do a sub-assembly, whatnot. Uh, I think this is really cool. It makes the Spider-Man image look a lot better than what it did in the past. I like the little details. That he's on the side of the Daily Bugle. I'm, I feel like this is part of an iconic image from a comic book that he was in, maybe an earlier one. And here's the problematic Alicia or Felicia Hardy. I still hate this pose. I think this pose, I mean, it looks more like she just got smacked and she's getting thrown about. She does not look like she is doing anything heroic or, um, I, I don't know, man. I think she's going to need a reposing once I get her and it's going to, I'm going to have to assemble her and then we'll go from there on the reposing. One thing I like about atomic mass games, they don't do some of the annoying things like what games workshop will do is they'll mold like part of the foot or the hand or something to the terrain. Atomic mass games don't, they don't do that. That model will 
99.9, just in case they do change it up in the future, 99.9% of the time is a separate piece from the terrain. So I can, I don't have to include any of this stuff when I assemble them and I can just repose her. I don't know how yet. Once again, I want to, I need to have the model in my hand and assembled and look at all the other knickknacks I have around to see the best way to pose her. Uh, and I do have to give them kudos. Normally Felicia um, eats her bootios and uh, <laughs> if you know the, the joke um, and usually has impressive cleavage. Uh, they have hidden that on the model and actually let, we can zoom in a little bit here. Um, even though she does, she is impressive there. I feel like they did part of this to avoid, um, any kind of controversial, uh, nonsense that they, whoops, I'm trying to turn her, turn the model around, um, any sort of controversy that, you know, um, Twitter, Twitter twits or whatever you call them would, uh, would have with the, the way the model looked, um, and they were modest with her butt. It also could be the way that she's posed. Um, it's not like her butt's going to be plump <laughs> and sticking out because the way she's bending over backwards. So I, I'm, I, I think that's a, a very awesome thing that they've done. I mean, of course, I would love to see you know, the full booty and everything like that. But I like the fact that they um, toned it down and put the focus on the character itself over you know her impressive assets so well done atomic mass games i think that's really really good that you've managed to um take a really cool character that's usually seen kind of like power girl over in dc seen as a sex a sexy character and made him still alluring as a female but also uh, pulled off a um tasteful uh, character there so good on you so, but we're not done yet let's take a look at craven and uh I, I like what they've got going on here um, more daily bugle stuff for craven he's got his kukri knife there and his hunting spear we've already seen that we've already seen these guys i just his um i think his pose is good i don't think i'm gonna have him leaping off that rock I think I'm just going to have him boots on the ground. We'll probably have that cornerstone there, but I don't think he needs to be leaping off. They, they like to do a lot of these leaping off things. And I get it. They want it to look dynamic and, and awesome, but it gets a little overdone. You're going to see that a little bit more of that here in a moment. The lizard, once again, uh, looks pretty gosh damn cool. What I'm digging is the connecting points here. They've got, looks like two very solid connecting points. The one on the back of his, let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. One on the back of his uh, left calf muscle, which I think that looks like a very solid connection. Unlike the Scarlet Witch is very flimsy. I don't know if you guys have experienced it, but I have, I, she's very flimsy connection. I think that was a very poor design. In fact, I'm at the point that I might not even include her magical whip wispiness. I don't, I'm not a big fan of it. And then the other side, you know, let me zoom out and rotate. And then he has another connection point that I think looks really good. It's actually probably the more solid of the connection points. It looks like the splash of water or sewer gunk coming up on, attaching to his, uh, his lab coat. So I think we're going to have a very good connection point there. So I'm not too nervous, especially considering how thick those connection points are and how they have a very, it looks like they have a very solid uh, connection, not this little tiny pip of a connection. It's like a broad uh, connection. So I'm not nervous about this model being flimsy. Really cool. And I love the fact, I love what they did with him. I mean, he looks, everything about him looks predatory. It looks just like I would imagine the lizard being in the uh, on the tabletop. All right, but we're not done with Marvel Cross Protocol. Let's hurry up. Let's try to get through uh, the rest of this. We have the what, the images for uh, Jean Grey, Miss Marvel, or Marvel Girl, or Marvel Woman. I think they just call her Jean Grey. We're going to take a look at that here in a second. And Cassandra Nova. Both of them using their uh, prodigious... Prodigious? 
amazing, powerful psychic powers to fly around tabletop. Looks like they're both probably going to be able to fly. And um, Jean Grey's looks okay. We're going to take a look at her miniature. Um, once again, kind of some flimsy connection points. Not too thrilled about this. But we'll see what we can, once the model comes out, what we can do with it. And I just, I think Cassandra's looks kind of dopey. The Not not the character. The character looks like what I would expect. The, the little power burst blasting off the ground looks really dopey. Sorry, Atomic Mass Games. That looks, that looks lazy. It looks lazy. Like, annoyingly... I am angry at you for doing all these amazing models and then you do something lazy like this. Shame on you. Shame on you. But let's take a look, a little bit closer look at their characters. All right, so we're going to zoom in on on uh, Jean Grey. And this is what I'm worried about. Look at that connection point for Jean Grey. It's just on the back of her calf. And it's not even like a very broad, it's just, you can see it cuts in probably like, I don't know, half a, half a mil centimeter or a couple centimeters, or is it millimeters? It's very small and that's not good. That's flimsy. It's only one connection point. Let's zoom out. That's only one connection point. She's not, I mean, that's, and even the, the, the rest of the X, it's, it's connected right there in the center. Look at that. That's flimsy. That's bad. Now I'm sure that you know it's it'll it'll work out, but you guys know as well as I do when you are transporting your miniatures, you're playing with your miniatures. All it takes is one slight bump, one cat jumping up on the table and knocking over a miniature, one oopsie doopsie poopsie, and the model's broken. So these connection points like this, and like up on here on her calf. That's not good. So I think what's going to happen, uh, at least for me with uh, with Jean Grey, I, I like her pose, but what I, I feel like can happen, and you guys, and when I get the model, I'll let you, you know, we'll, we'll do a show for it over on my Twitch, is I feel like I'll be able to uh, fill in with a little bit of green stuff or some other putty on the back of her calf and, and go ahead and blend it in and everything. Then we'll um, let it dry sand it down, and then paint her. And my goal is to, we'll, we'll have her kind of floating off the ground or something. And But I think what we'll do is put this blade of energy out in front of her hand like she's throwing out this psychic wave, and that's what's going to be hitting. I'll let you guys know um, whenever, whenever the model comes out and I get my hands on her. Now, Cassandra Nova still, to me, looks impressive. We'll do a slight zoom up here, not a widescreen, but I think they did a very good job of the model. The clothing looks on point. Um, I know the closer you look at the model, the paint job is not that great, but uh, it still looks good. I'm not too happy with the face. It looks like scrunched in. I feel like they, once again, they're, they got a little lazy with this model, I think overall. But, I mean, with the just the face, the boots look good. Just this explosion of Mountain Dew energy is just not, not doing it for me. So I think Cassandra Nova, I've got an idea, and I'll, we'll wait until the model comes out. I've got an idea, and I think it'll be really cool. But we'll, let's wait till we get there. And I think you guys might like what I'm going to do with, with, with these two characters. But I think... Overall, Cassandra Nova looks good, and she's a. I think she's a great nemesis um, for not only Jean Grey but the X Men and anybody really. I'm hoping they will put her on par, power level wise, that she should be because she is a very powerful character, very scary, very intimidating. So, uh, man, I'm looking forward to it. These two characters need some need some alterations when the model comes out. But, um, and maybe I'll use Scarlet Witch as a test bed for that. But I think I'm, I'm still going to get them because I like Cassandra Nova. I mean, she, I mean, normally I don't like bad guy characters, but she is evil and she is terrifying. I, and I think I, I like that. And she might actually get into my top 10 roster for 
uh, characters, the top 10 characters, uh, top 10 villains. Jean Grey is not in my top 10 of anything, but she is definitely a contender. Oh, dude, their, her hair looks pretty on point. I'm not going to lie. They did a good job with her flowing hair. And apparently she is eating her bootios. Yep, she's eating her bootios. So we always got to check that here on the channel. Um, whether it's Captain America's ass or it's uh, Jean Grey's. We have always had to check to see if they're eating their bootios. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let me know what you guys think down in the description. What are you guys going to do with the Jean Grey and uh, Cassandra Nova? Are you worried about that? those connection points on Jean Grey? Or do you think it's going to be okay? Do you plan on letting Cassandra Nova be on her fountain, Mountain Dew fountain there? And what are you going to do with... Um, are you going to get these models at all? Let me know down in the comments below. On your way down, hit those comments and the thumbs up, hopefully. I, I know you might have to do a thumbs down. Please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. We're almost ready for giveaways. And I've decided that we are doing a double giveaway once we get to 100 uh, subscribers here on YouTube on the Havoc Maker Studio page. And when we get to 3,000 over on FMP Wargamers, depending on which channel you're on right now, the link for the other channel is in the description below. So you can just jump over hit that subscribe button. We're going to hit, uh, when we get to 3000, I'm going to go ahead and do a double giveaway over on FMP war gamers. So share this video out with your local Marvel Christ protocol groups and your local tabletop miniature games. So later on today, we're going to come back with some big news for Warhammer 40,000 and thousand suns and gray knights so stay tuned for that probably in the next hour you guys have yourself a wonderful thursday and i'll talk to you real soon see you guys later